Day 14. Time, approximately 10.30 a.m. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. Puppy whooshed past Sidekick, scooting narrow circles around the other foal. Whee! You can't touch me, I'm super fast! The ghoul alternated between trotting and galloping to try and keep up. A distant bystander would have seen a couple of foals in hazmat suits playing together. And maybe that was exactly what they were doing. This made the journey towards Emerald Shores slow going. But it didn't seem to matter at all. So, sidekick, said Puppy, stopping her scooter to look at her companion. I'm not sure that Mom likes ugly ponies, but I'll tell her that you're my friend, and that you lost my friend to boot, and she'll fix your arrow, and, uh, just don't do any weird things, like horse tile ponies do. Okie dokie, I don't want to get grounded my very first day back. The creature tilted its head and Puppy decided that that could count as a yes. Very well. I've been here some other times. It's super fun, but you mustn't annoy the pretty ponies with too many questions, or Mom will scold you. Uh, it's not that I really did anything wrong, but some ponies here don't like the conversations. Like asking 30 times in a row why she was allowed to trot around naked in Canterlot, but had to wear a bikini when she was at the seaside. Really, it made no sense at all. Day 14. Time approximately 11 a.m. Location, Ironworks. Big 52, South Branch. Blam blam. The raider's head exploded like a ripe watermelon. Trigger paused a moment to reload her combat shotgun while Jam watched her back. We better move fast, Happy. The rangers must have found some resistance not far from here. A nearby explosion rained down dirt and metal fragments over their heads. Trigger pulled the safety and readied her weapon again. Yeah, before we get some unwanted holes. Mare dashed into a tent. Let's check this one. Cover me. As soon as Jammy was behind her, Happy tumbled inside and opened fire. Blam blam, kaboom. Eep. A bunch of electrical equipment exploded in a flash of sparks and colored flames. Good one, Happy. Keep firing at things like themed like robots instead of checking first. The inside of the tent contained a couch, a couple of crates, a table with some food laid out to be eaten, and another table with a once-functioning radio equipment. But apparently there was no pony there. Jam stepped inside, checking on the situation. So, what are we waiting for? The mayor didn't reply immediately, still looking around the place. I'm not sure, but I think I heard a gasp when I came in shooting. Only I don't see the pretty pony that gasped. Well, in that case, it's easy. The stallion lowered his assault rifle and shot a burst around the room, blowing holes in the crates, thrashing the bed, and transforming the half-eaten meal into a masterwork of postmodern art. His efforts paid off when they heard a scream of pain and a mare appeared out of thin air under the bed. She had curled up into a ball, trying to stem the flow of blood from a wound to her belly. Lucky shot, Happy muttered, approaching the wounded mare to finish her when the merciful bullet to the head. She was quite a young unicorn, with a tower as a cutie mark and an expression of a lost filly. The guard pony hesitated. Please, help me. I... Don't want to die. The unicorn didn't even open her eyes as she pleaded between one scream of pain and another. Mommy. Mommy. Help me. What are you waiting for? She's in agony. Jam sighed and tried next to his mate, readying his rifle. Wait. Happy lowered the stallion's gun with a hoof, without taking her eyes off the bleeding pony who was getting weaker with each passing moment but still begged for her mother to come and save her. What? What have we become? Didn't we learn anything at all? This pony didn't even fight back. She was just hiding. Emma pulled out a healing potion from her saddlebags and opened it. Are you planning to save this pony? Why? She would have killed you without second thought. Jamie snorted disapproval. Her friends are actually killing our allies this very moment. 
Trigger launched an accusing glare at the stallion. Do you see any weapons in this room? The wounded unicorn barely had the strength to sob, but Happy found a way to make her drink more than half the potion. Every pony's a pretty pony. We still could still bring back the real equestria if that's the truth. Trigger Happy cradled the pony for its head and hummed a smooth lullaby. Jammed gun besides his mate and sighed. You care too much. Someday you'll regret this. Trigger sighed and kept humming. Day 14. Time approximately 11 a.m. Location Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. Puppy frowned. This wasn't at all the Emerald Shores she knew. This place was a mess. She couldn't see any other ponies at all. All the pretty bungalows were so ugly that it was impossible that it was the same place and playground was a disaster too. What's going on with everything these days? Where are the ponies and the music and the merry songs and all those funny shops and... And where's mom? The Philian Yellow groaned in frustration. Nah, I'm sorry, sidekick. Seems that a tornado went through this place. I wanted to show you the Ferris wheel, but... Puppy gave a long, sad, looking at the rusted, half-bent monster in the middle of the resort. No, I don't think it's running at the moment. Actually, the ghoul didn't seem to care much, but Puppy really wanted to make a good impression on her new friend. Ah, uh, maybe we go to the candy store, yeah? So we get a surprise for Mom? Well, that was actually a good idea. Taking a present to her mom was a good way to get extra hugs, after all. We'll go to the plushie store, too. Let's go. The filly merrily trod down the hill towards the first houses. Emerald Shores was in a really bad shape. All the buildings were ruined and the windows were either barred or broken. Almost every door in town had been nailed shut with wooden planks. Wow. Must have been quite the storm. But don't worry, I know a mighty fine place where we can get candies. It's down this alley. Puppy splashed through a couple of puddles as she walked through a small passage between the buildings. Warning. Mild radiation detected. Threat level negligible. The filly simply ignored the warning and kept trotting down her way. Warning. Heavy radiation detected. Threat level negligible. Puppy frowned, annoying that mantra. Ah, stop with the nonsense and prepare some bits, Mr. Voice. The yellow ones. I want a lot of candy. A bunch of golden coins floated in front of the foal. She chirped in joy as she turned the corner to find... Ah, but that's not fair. A shallow round crater stood exactly where the candy kiosk was supposed to be. Puppy sighed. All right, all right, don't worry. I know a lot of other good places to buy some treats. Yeah, this place was a resort after all. There were lots of different choices to pick from. What are the chances that every single candy shop was gone? Day 14. Time approximately 11.15 a.m. Location, Ironworks. Big 52, South Branch. White poked his head inside the tent, levitating the rifle in front of him, ready to fire. But almost immediately, he lowered the weapon. Pony down. Jammed gun turned toward the White Apple's leader. Well, sort of. We shot a raider in the guts and Happy's trying to save her life. Oh, okay. Well, when you're done, the rangers are pushing through. Wait. What? Mike stepped inside the tent, approaching the trio of ponies. Weren't we supposed to shoot them down? Did the plan change? Gun shrugged. Go figure. It has something to do with pretty ponies. Oh, shut up, Jammy. This mare wasn't even fighting. She had a stealth buck and was hiding under the bed, unarmed. I'm a fighter, not a cold-blooded killer. Trigger Happy magically picked up the sheet from the bed and laid it on the mare's body. Mr. White shook his head. Look, we don't have time for this. The herd is retreating. We must give chase before they can reorganize. But we are not playing the nice ponies. We need to close this battle quickly so we can reach Puppy before that damned prophecy comes true and some shadow falls on our heads. When she heard the name of Puppy, the wounded mare began to mutter in a low voice, The ghost. She summoned the undying from the fog. They... they'll eat your soul. 
They killed every pony. Why did I anger the ghost? It's my fault. My fault. Mom, please save me. Ghost. Undying. It's just a magical curtain of fog. What is she blabbering about? White raised an eyebrow in confusion. Jammy cleared his voice. Well, actually, coming here we found three ponies that were dismembered. Like, well, as if somebody had killed them with his bare hooves. It was quite unsettling. Happy nodded. Yeah, I don't think that we were the first group that attacked here this morning. Every pony we met is already fleeing or shooting blindly at everything that moved, friend or foe. White Stallion snorted. Oh, wonderful. At least that explains what's going on when we arrived. Now, can some pony explain to me what the buck this raider is blabbering about? He poked the mare on the shoulder, trying to make her talk a little more. Hey, do you understand me? Who did you anger? What attacked you? The ghost. The ghost of the Big 52. We... no. I... I spanked her. She cried, and... and her tears made demons arrive. Yellow ponies like her, but cruel, soulless beasts. Undying. They slaughtered the patrols and the guards. They killed Bloodbath. Now they came for me. I spanked her. I spanked her. It's my fault. Pony Fort was screaming in panic, and it took all three ponies in the tent to keep her down. Whoa, calm down. There are no demons here. They're gone. Stop struggling, you're still weak. Sitting on the mare's back, Jammed finally managed to put her uh, down, calm her down a bit. Or at least make her stop trying to run away. Did you... Spank puppy? Mr. White almost snickered at the piece of information. Really? <laughs> I always miss the funny parts. Day 14. Time, approximately, 11.15 a.m. Location, the memorial. Big 52, South Branch. Pinkie Pie sat at Long Ear's side. Well, that's all, folks. The farseer let out a breath as her trance slipped away. I feel so tired. Oh, don't worry. That always happens at the beginning, but it'll get better. It's just a matter of getting used to the feeling. Unicorn Mare tried to get up, but her legs couldn't support her weight. Oh. So this is it. Nah, not yet. But I don't think it'll be much longer. You asked too much of yourself, and I warned you about that. Don't you remember? Pinky smiled. Oh, but don't worry. I was told that it's not painful, and we can play some time while we wait. Long Ears smiled a bit, talking with hallucination while slowly dying of drug poisoning, far from home and all alone. It was a high price to pay, but if it helped every pony else, it was worth it. Tell me, will... She be fine. Why do you ask me? I'm not the shaman here. I'm just a party pony. Why would I know? Want to pay, pin the tail on the pony? Please. I... I need to know. Pinky sighed, frowning. Oh, why does every pony have to be so dramatic? All right, all right. She won't be fine. Not yet. There's one last step, but that fog trick wasn't half bad. The unicorn sighed, wearily. So, my death has no meaning. Oh, please. Put away that frown. We still have a party to attend. Besides, it was pretty nice fog, all things considered. And it really helped those poor ghosties from the graveyard. At least you set things in a way that the little ghost won't face her last trial alone. That's not a small task at all. You gambled against the odds, and you won. You should be happy. Well, it costs your life, but you should still be happy anyway. Right? Right? Ah, look at her. It's like she's sleeping. Oh well. Rise and shine, little pony. We gotta move if we don't want to be late. Day 14. Time, approximately 11.45. A.M. Location. Ironworks. Big 52. South Branch. What the fuck do you mean she's not here? 
Henry pressed her beak against Scold's muzzle, completely ignoring the crowd of rangers that instantly turned their weapons on her. You fucking cheater. I did my part. I trusted you. And now you're telling me that she's gone. The griffin reared up and roared at the sky. Skull gestured to the surrounding rangers to lower their weapons and cleared his voice, clearly not very impressed with the mercenary's display of badassery. I know we made a pact, Griffin, but she awoke and went away on her own. And you know how easy it is to keep that foal still when she wants to go away. Skold was evidently being sarcastic. Henry's eyes blazed like two points of magma. You know where she is now? Skold shrugged. She was heading to Emerald Shores the last time I checked, but I'm no Farseer. The mercenary deadpanned. Let me guess. South of here? The ranger nodded. Headed to the sea. Can't miss it. Lonesome Pony stepped out from the crowd of bystanders. Just hold on a second, Griffin. If you're planning to go there, I'm coming with you. The stallion flapped his wings, flying in front of Henrietta. And we should wait for everybody else as well. It could be dangerous. Yeah, sure. I'm totally trusting you again after what happened last time. You proved to be so untrustworthy. Look, there's just one member of your damned race that I care about, and she's not here. So long, ponies. Henry spoke the last word as if it left a bad taste in her beak. The griffin flapped her wings and flew away, quickly disappearing behind the factory's roof. Lonesome snorted. I'm going with her. Please try to come after us as soon as possible. Mr. White face hoofed. Yeah, sure. Let's get separated. That sounds like the best plan ever. Wasn't there still a prophecy about a shadow coming from the south and stuff? We already left behind our mumbo-jumbo expert, and we can't afford to split up again. I say that we check on the survivors of this place, decide what to do with the prisoners, and when Long Ear arrives, we move all south together. And speaking of that, where the hay is molten gold? Asked Trigger Happy while checking the surroundings. The Pegasus snorted again, with impatience. Ah, for goodness sakes, there are like 15 rangers here. I'm sure they can manage this place better than the last owners, and open that stable door in the blink of an eye. I'm way more concerned about the ghost at the moment. I'm going after the griffin, and I hope that you'll all move quite quickly too. This is not a party. If the farseer is right, this is a race against time. Lonesome Pony flew away, leaving his last few words hanging in the air. Day 14. Time, approximately 12 a.m. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. Puppy was not very happy. She couldn't find any presents for Mom. Actually, she couldn't even find a single pony in the whole town, which made her feel a little nervous. The filly had a feeling that something was wrong, and was beginning to fear that Mom had already gone somewhere else. Still, the arrow pointed to a hill right in front of the sea, and it hadn't moved for all the time that Puppy stayed in town. The only problem was that each time she had reached the arrow so far, a new one would pop up for her to follow. Again, and again, and again. Okie dokie, sidekick. Let's go to Mom. Maybe this time's the good one. The two ponies trot uphill, along a small red muddy trail. The hill had patches of green grass and featured an old dead tree. When Puppy reached the top, she found herself in front of a small group of standing stones with names and cutie marks carved onto them, like the ones at Dad's place. This was weird. Was this another Dad's place? The pony got up under the tree's skeletal limbs and walked towards Puppy and her new friends. The filly turned her head towards the newcomer. Mommy? Puppy's voice was edged with hope. But she quickly turned into a frown. You're not, Mommy. Right behind Puppy, Sidekick growled, ready to attack. No, Puppy, I'm not your mother. Sorry. Molten Gold coughed, making a rasping sound as he stopped besides a gray, partially moist-covered stone. I'm really... 
Really? Sorry. The fool trotted next to the ghoul, and noticed how the pink arrow was pointing at the stone. The name on it was particularly weathered. But she could clearly see the cutie mark, with a cloud and three raindrops. Mom's cutie mark. Mom. Day 14. Time, approximately 12 a.m. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. Mr. White trotted out from the factory, followed by Scold. It's all settled. We can go now. Trigger Happy nodded. All right, shouldn't be a long trip. But that's no reason to dawdle. Scold looked at the road sign that announced the distance from Ironworks to Emerald Shores. Just six kilometers. It wasn't bad weather for it. They might even be able to see the town from where they were. In that case, we ride. But depending upon what we find once we're there, we may need to buy some time for the others. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's move, Slowpokes! With these last words, Trigger Happy galloped south, along the last trail of the Big 52. Oh well. The last one there is a red trotter. Sagebrush flashed a smile at his uncle, the old scribe, then followed the mare, easily matching her pace. Scold sighed. Youngsters, they'll be exhausted before they're even halfway there. The two older stallions followed the rest of the group, keeping a slower but much more sustainable speed. Day 14. Time, approximately. 12.10 a.m. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. The ghoul said nothing, and simply turned away to give Puppy the time to realize. Mom? Is here? But... The filly was staring at the stone, trying to understand what was going on. In the meantime, Sidekick decided to ignore Molten, and sat right behind the Packmaster. She... went with Dad? But... but... no. Puppy's voice was weak, low, as if she was talking with herself out loud, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle back together without knowing how big the picture was. But I wanted to go too. I... I wanted to see Dad too. Why did she leave me? I... I... Puppy broke into a quiet sob, but she continued with her monologue. I didn't mean to disobey. I just... just wanted to see the fireworks. If I didn't know that the house was going to fall and Mom was going to go away, I... I... She sank to her rump and looked down at her hooves. I just wanted to see the stupid fireworks. Why did everything have to go wrong? I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Please, Mom, come back. Puppy cried out loud, screaming at the stone in a desperate attempt to be heard by her mother. Please, I... I'll do anything you say. Scold me. Thank me. But don't go away without me again. Molten Gold looked at the poor soul in front of him, trying to find something to say. Anything. The scene was going far worse than he'd figured. And... Ah, crap. She was looking at him now. Please. Please, you know where Mom is. Take my toys. Take everything. But... I... Have... And tell me where she is. Mom more shiny balls? I'll go find all the shiny balls you want. Please? Please? Puppy got up and stepped towards the old ghoul, who couldn't bring himself to avoid her stare or move back from where she was. Puppy, I'm sorry. But this is where your mother is. She... She is dead. She has been for a long, long time. Puppy smiled in a creepy way, her pupils shrinking until they were complete black dots in a white empty space. Her smile broadened from cheek to cheek, in a way that Molten would have believed anatomically impossible. Dead? Is it just that? She's dead? Then everything's okay. She'll get better. I always get better when I die. You're dead and you're perfectly fine. 
Okie dokie Loki. That is good. We just have to wait, right? Right? Molten Gold looked at her, tilting his head. Get better. Just wait? Puppy? No. It doesn't work that way. She... She won't be coming back. She is dead. She is... Look, you can stay with me, okay? I won't leave you alone. I know I'm not your mom, but... Two puppy smiles. What the hay's going on here? Henry landed on the tree, causing the couple of branches to crack. Oh, and don't even lay a hoof on my friend, Gombi. The griffin readied one of her pistols and kept it pointed at Molten Gold. The filly in yellow turned towards a newcomer, recognizing her immediately. Henry! Henry, please! Mom! Mom, is, is, is a, she's abandoning me! She went with Dad, and the ugly mummy is saying she's not coming back again. Please help me. The mercenary took a moment to understand Puppy's words, then looked at the ghoul, who pointed at the grave with a hoof. Ah, fuck. I'm late. With a flap of her wings, Henry landed in front of the foal and put a claw on her helmet. Puppy, you don't have to worry. I'm with you, okay? You're not alone. But I want my mom. I need my mom. She... She's the only one that can fix all this. The broken house. The silly suit. Find sidekicks, mom. Make the happy days come back. I... I don't know what to do without her. Suddenly, the griffin hugged puppy, saying nothing for several seconds. But... But she already did a lot on your own, puppy. You saved me. You gave freedom to the inhabitants of Sun City. You made the rangers stop fighting. And you are a good pony. You're the only nice pony that I know. You don't need your mother to fix things. I can be your big sis, okay? Henry and Puppy. The best team ever. The Griffin is right, Puppy. You are quite a big pony yourself. Your mom would be proud of you. Puppy broke free from Henry's embrace, her eyes burning pink. But she left me here. She abandoned me and went with Dad. I love her. Why did she abandon me? Why doesn't she love me? What the? Henry cocked her head in confusion. What the fuck are you saying? She didn't abandon you by choice. She's dead. I'm sure she would never abandon you. You were supposed to be in a safe stable. Otherwise, she would rather die than have left you alone in a dangerous place. Lonesome Pony joined the group, landing on the branch that Henry had left. Uh, I have no idea what's going on, but I don't think that shouting at the fool will improve the situation. Well, yeah, Miss Griffin. I'd avoid yelling like... Puppy ignored the two stallions and practically roared her response. So then why does she come back and take me with her? You idiot, she's dead. Dead! Henry brought her beak up against Puppy's helmet and looked the foal straight in their eyes. Molten Gold tried to intervene, but Sidekick growled as soon as he had taken a single step. Your mom can't come back. You lost her. Live with it. She's in that grave and won't ever ever come back to you. This is why you must react and take your stupid life in your own hooves. Just leave the grave where it is and come with me. Let's go, puppy. The griffin turned on her tail, gave an exasperated look at the old mummy and the pegasus, before noticing a group of ponies that were galloping towards them from the north. See? Your friends are coming for you. You're making every pony worry. Show some guts and shrug it off. Now, it's now or never. Puppy looked at the various ponies, then again at the gray stone with the cutie mark. Mom, is inside that stone? Henry dismissed the question, too focused on her own words to notice Puppy looking at the uh, gest molten gesturing like mad and shaking his head. Yeah, and she'll stay there forever. So, you can come visit her as much as you want. 
Now come back with the mortals. And let's go and tell your friends that you're all right. Rock. Puppy grabbed the Rock of Destiny and started attacking the tombstone. What the fuck are you doing? Henry tried to stop her friend, but Sidekick jumped between the two. Even Henrietta was disturbed by those burning eyes. Mom! Mom, come out! Puppy hit the grave with all her might, denting it with each strike, as Molten Gold and Lonesome Pony looked on in horror. Wait, little one. She won't come back like that. Please stop. You're... you're destroying your mother's grave. Lonesome jumped from the tree, landing behind the stone and blocking Puppy's hoof. What's with you? Stop! Let me go! Let me go! I want my mom! Why can't I have my mom? Sidekick turned to face the Pegasus, and as soon as Henry found an opening, she reached for Puppy and hit the foal in the helmet. You idiot! Pull yourself together! Really, there are moments when I'd like to be able to come slap you. Forget your mother, you stubborn foal! You're with me now! Stop asking for the impossible and come back to reality! Confronting the Griffin's rage, the two ponies holding her down, Puppy's frenzy seemed to be drained away. The foal looked off towards the sea. But, but if I forget her, if I can't reach her, there's nothing left to do for me. Henry waved a claw. We'll find something to do, okay? You just have to stop obsessing and calm down. I'll think about everything else. Just behave and stay put. Look, your other friends are here. The little group that was composed of Mr. White, Scold, Trigger Happy, and Jammed Gun finally reached the top of the hill. They were all exhausted, but Scold still had the strength to ask. What? What's going on? Puppy looked at the Rock of Destiny, still in her hoof, and sighed. I... I don't know. I just want to sleep forever and never wake up. Henry patted Puppy on the helmet, smiling gently. I know that feeling. But it'll go away. I've been through that, too. Now sit here and calm down for a moment, while we talk with the new arrivals. Okie dokie. The feeling yellow nodded weakly, then threw her stone away. The Rock of Destiny rolled down the hill, bouncing and gaining speed, falling over the panoramic walk and landing on the beach with a loud metallic noise. Day 14. Time, approximately 12.25 a.m. Hmm. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. Molten Gold and Lonesome Pony had already joined the group of new arrivals, so Henry hurried up to reach the others, leaving Puppy alone with the grave and her yellow-suited friend. No worry. She's getting better. She just needs time to... But... Did she cry? How is she? Puppy felt empty. It was different from being sad or angry or anything else she'd felt until that day. She was in front of her mom, but mom wasn't there, and she would never be there for her anymore. I don't want to sound a bit paranoid, but I'd like to check anyway. Keep an eye on the ghoul. He seems to be quite aggressive. Every pony was talking at the same time creating a mass of voices overlapping one another. Puppy didn't care. She was slowly sailing around her route, deeper and deeper inside. The simple idea that she wasn't going to see her mother anymore drowned out everything else in her mind. No more mom. Ever. No more. She walked all this road just to see her again. It was the only reason she had. But now it was gone. She liked her friends, but this just felt wrong. Everything around her felt wrong. This wasn't the place she was meant to live in. It was so evident. There had been to be something else. Something different. Something better. This is it. We did it. The Big 52 is safe. The fool's all right. Maybe at least we can go back home. Back home? What home? It was gone. Her house in Canterlot was gone. Mom was gone. No more mom, forever. But we didn't want to live like this. Didn't want to 
lie awake each night until the first light of dawn started to peek through the clouds, only to realize that that mom wasn't there for her. She just wanted to sleep and not wake up at all. Oh, but that's easy, little one. You just have to ask, and I'll let you sleep forever. In a never-ending, beautiful dream. Shut up, Jammy. Tunnel Town won't burn while we're away. Really? You can do that? Of course. I'm the master of dreams. I can give you all the happiness you want. All you need to do is ask. The herd is not defeated. We simply drove them back. We should attempt to consider offering them a peaceful solution. I'm not sure they'll accept that scold. Their tribe is not based on love and care. Maybe now that they're all their hot shots are gone, the others will be more reasonable. We should at least try. Forever, ever, ever? Forever and evermore. It's a pact between you and I. I'll give you an eternal dream, where you can be with your mother and father. And in exchange, you'll let me sort out things here while you're asleep. Deal. Sidekick tapped on Molten's back, whining. But the pony was more interested in the discussion between Scold and White than the brainless Canterlot Ghoul. I've been around a lot more years. And I remember the herd wasn't originally that hostile. They began raiding when the tribes on the Big 52 started asking a toll to enter their settlements. The herd traders couldn't afford it, so they resorted to the other way of acquiring goods. I think that if the tribes will decide to share a bit, everything could be just fine. I'm not sure of that. My grandpa said that the wild herd was a rattlesnake ready to bite you in your ass. Your grandfather was the first tribe leader to introduce the toll, White. Why don't you show some common sense and be the first to abolish it? Puppy took a long breath and nodded. Okie dokie. Deal. Do it. You made the right choice, Puppy. You won't regret it. Do what now? Look, Puppy. I really like you and I owe you a lot. But abolishing the tax is not that easy. Please don't talk about things you don't understand. Yes. Yes. Just make all of this stop. Oh, how much I love your naivety. I'll miss it. Here we go. Now, close your eyes. Footnote. Level up. 18. New perk added. Here and now, you gain a level. Because stuff. Level up. 19. New perk added. Concentrated fire. When in sats, you gain a cumulative 5% bonus in accuracy when aiming more than one shot at the same part of the body. Well, what did you expect? Puppy was so depressed that she picked a random perk. She doesn't even have sats. New quest perk added. Galloping Nightmare, rank 3. Yay. Now you're the nightmare reincarnated. This could give you some issues with social life. Oh, and your standing towards every faction is set to hostile. On the bright side, we won't list all the bonuses you get, since it would take too long.